All right, and we are live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live broadcast of Your Home Show. This is Chris Weniger here along with Rebecca Guerrero. What are we doing? We're looking to educate and advise you on your home, whether you're looking to buy a new house, moving up, moving down, or refinancing. Yes, welcome back, everyone. Episode 38. It seems crazy to me every time I say that bigger number. It's awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. Um, so normal layout, we're going to go over the market update. What has changed in real estate and mortgages over the past week? And our guest today is Harlan, who is from our Fairway family, who will go over what a reverse mortgage is and how it could set you up in retirement. So thank you so much, Harlan, for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for being on, Harlan. Before we get to your good stuff, we're going to do a history fact today. You know me, and I love my history. 68 years ago, Queen Elizabeth takes the throne as a proclaimed queen of the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia, and New Zealand. Now, remember, we want to treat you like a king or queen when you're looking at your home buying process. Right, Rebecca? Yes, we do. <laughs> so ta let's talk about the market. What is going on? We are one step closer to the $1.9 trillion stimulus. Yes, $1.9 trillion stimulus. Stay tuned on how this is going to impact the real estate market. Unemployment, remember last week I was going to tell you, I was going to report on it. Unemployment went from 6.7% to 6.3%. But that number 6.3% is being reported in your news market here. Um, should be about 10% unemployment. There's a misclassification here due to people not being counted. You know, there's a large amount of people that are unemployed and are not counted due to COVID reasons. In good news, we're seeing an improvement in the average hourly wages. Year over year, it went from 5.1% to 5.4%. So you're making more, you're taking more home. It depends. Are you working more? Are you, are you working less? at the end of the day is the funds that you are taking home. Now, an interesting tidbit, 30% of the stimulus money that people receive by Americans went into their savings account. It's kind of a cool thing. Uh, while 35% they used that stimulus money to pay down debt. Now, the other 29% bought TVs, appliances, so on and so forth. So interesting to see how that number broke down. Wondering if anybody has any stimulus money left over? You know what? You can use this as part of your down payment when you're looking at buying a new house. We want to remind you that inventory for homes on the market, it remains very, very low. The market is tight. It's imperative that you get a solid pre-approval when making an offer. So that's important, right, Rebecca, when we're taking a look at getting into a house? It's always important. I think we touch on it every single weekend, but... I mean, we have to keep doing it because that's how important it is with the inventory being so low. There's so many buyers out there and not enough sellers that you really have to set yourself up for success. And um, it's good news though. People are trying to think of, okay, well, homes are appreciating and then they're unaffordable to the first time home buyers and all that kind of stuff. But what Chris just said is that the um, income is going up, rates are down. So it's actually more affordable when you look at it that way, because you know interest rates are lower, your income is higher, so it's easier to afford a home. Good news. Very good news. And also too, with the first time home buyer programs, we can take a look at zero or limited down payment. So we have lots of options. And that's one of the things that Rebecca and I keep track of as far as what's going on in the market, what's the hottest new loan programs to see to make the best use of your mortgage dollar. Absolutely. With that, let's take another moment to welcome the king of reverse mortgages, Harlan. Well, I don't know if I'm a king, but I don't know much about a whole lot of stuff, but I know a lot about reverse mortgages. I've been doing it for 18 years, uh, 25 years in the business, and it is still very fun. And now I have gray hair and I kind of fit in with the group that I've been working with for the last couple of decades. So it's pretty fun. Yes, yes, awesome. Well, you know, you mentioned how long you've been in the business, which is quite some time, which is awesome to hear that you are very knowledgeable with what you're doing. So I'm glad that you're on the show. Um, but tell us a little bit about you before we get into the reverse mortgages. What do you do when you're not clocked in? 
Well, I, I really like work. My hobby is work. So I don't really ever clock out, so to speak, because there's always some book to read or something else that has something to do with retirement or something to do with business, whatever. But uh, I do definitely take time. I have four sons, four wonderful daughter-in-laws, and most importantly, four grandchildren. And anybody that has grandchildren totally understands that they uh, take a lot of time and you absolutely want to spend a lot of time with them and you will do whatever they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. They have an incredible control uh, over you. And it's a, a lot of fun. I, I'm thrilled. I, we all, we all had four sons and now I have, uh, three granddaughters. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I actually got out of changing diapers for a long time because I explained to my daughter-in-laws that I don't know how to change girls' diapers. I only change boy diapers. They called me on that. And now I have to change their diapers too. <laughs> oh, nice try Harlan. Nice try. <laughs> so tell us, what do you like to do when you're not clocked in? Uh, well, uh, I, I do enjoy uh, a fair amount of uh, kind of somewhat competitive sports. Racquetball is something that's kind of fun when I'm not traveling. And so there's, I, and uh, I love history as you do. And uh, reading and studying that is a tremendous amount of fun because history repeats itself. And that's especially the case when it comes to mortgages and money. And it's interesting to see how that all ties into history, especially in the most recent 200 years in the US. Now, I'm sure a lot of our viewers, just like me before I got into the business, I had never even heard of a reverse mortgage. I don't even know what it is. So could you explain a little bit about how it's different than a regular mortgage? Well, I used to be a photographer, and so a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. And so this is the easiest way to explain it. So whether you're 18 and uh, or 25 and buying your first house, or whether you're in your 40s or 50s, or you're 60, 70, or 80, this will make sense to you because this is a whole life cycle of your money in th uh, three circles and two rectangles. Bucket number one, uh, circle number one is your monthly income, your ability to make money. And then bucket number two is the money you put away for the future, your nest egg, your 401ks and your uh, stocks, bonds, savings, whatever. And then bucket number three is your home equity. And so to really understand how a reverse mortgage works, of course, we need to understand how forward mortgage works, which everybody's familiar with that. You make a bunch of money during your lifetime. Even if you only make 30,000 a year, you'll make over a million dollars in your lifetime. All of that goes up to your top rectangle, which is your retirement wallet or your pre-retirement wallet. Most of that money evaporates right off the top. You use it for food, clothes, and everything else. But you try to save 5%, 10%, 200 bucks a month, whatever, and you drop it into your nest egg savings for the future. But what people don't realize is they're also saving money in bucket three in their house. My son just bought a house last Friday, my last son to buy a house in Eden Prairie. And when he did, he said, hey, dad, in 30 years, I can do a reverse mortgage myself because he's 30. So that is money, wealth that you're putting away that people don't really think about as savings. Now I get to be over 62 and I'm in the bottom wallet. And maybe I don't work as hard or work as much or I lose my job or whatever the happens. And now I need to draw money from somewhere else. Now, most people draw money from their savings, but they don't realize that a reverse mortgage allows them to take money back from all of the hundreds of thousands of dollars that they sent to bucket three. So a reverse mortgage is just a mortgage. It's just like any other mortgage, except it allows you to take money out instead of putting money in like a regular forward mortgage does. You put equity, it turns into equity, it's not usable. Reverse mortgage waves a magic wand and turns it into cash. A lot of people are afraid to use that and have all kinds of preconceived ideas. And as the title says, um, the sacred cow of home equity kicks in and they say, no, we can't touch that. We gotta give it to our kids. But the fact is, is that the kids don't want the house, they want the money. And so what do they do? They sell it and turn it back into cash. So long answer to a short question, but a reverse is the reverse of a regular mortgage. You get money out instead of putting money in just like your 401k or your IRA. I love that diagram that you showed because it's perfect as far as how you explain it. You explain it very well. Harlan, talk to us. Is it really true that 95% of the population would be better off with a reverse mortgage? Yeah, that's what, you know, some people say, well, okay, that's nice for some people. I mean, if you're broken, you're eating cat food, maybe it's a good idea to take out a reverse mortgage. Uh, and some people actually have told me that. They said, when I run out of money and I don't have money to go to the grocery store, then I'll do a reverse mortgage. That's like saying I'm not going to take money out of my IRA until I can't work anymore or until my social security runs out or whatever. The fact is, is that not everyone needs 
a reverse mortgage. But if everyone looked at the options, they would want a reverse mortgage. And that's when, because they would be better off. And that's where 95% of the population uh, is better off because they will pay less money in taxes, if, even if they're wealthy uh, and they don't need a reverse mortgage, they're better off taking money out of that bucket three, out of their house, because it's tax-free money and it's cheap money, it's only 3% money uh, or less. And uh, instead of pulling money out of their investments or going back to work or whatever the situation is. And we know with COVID, a lot of people lost their jobs and they didn't really plan on losing their jobs that early. It especially hit our demographic hard because as most of the people in the uh, 60 to 90 age bracket cannot really work from home. Some of them can, but a lot of them were going to work and they lost their jobs and they didn't plan on it. So then they've only got bucket two and bucket three because they're no longer bringing in money from bucket one. And then just to clarify, what age do you need to be to qualify for a reverse mortgage? Well, uh, you have to be 62. So before all of you that are under 62 say, oh, click this off, forget it. Let's go to the next thing on Facebook. You need to know about this. If you're 25, my kids who are 25s and 30 somethings need to know about this because it affects their inheritance it affects the biggest threat to any younger person's uh, retirement is their parents' retirement. If their parents' retirement gets screwed up, then that's going to cre create a problem, monetary, uh, a monetary uh, problem for them that they're not, they're because they're going to have to help their parents. So, and maybe it's a long-term care. Maybe they got to quit their job and take care of their parents. Whatever the situation is, so it's important that people realize that their parents and their grandparents have access to funds that they don't even know. It's it, it's in the walls of their house. It's in their living room, all locked up. And it makes sense simply to use it correctly. The other thing is, is even if you're not 62, if you're 50, many people get a 15-year mortgage. They shouldn't. They should take out a 30-year mortgage, keep paying the minimum, put money away for the future in bucket two. And then um, when they get to 62, like me, I'm 60. The day I turn 62, I turn off my mortgage payment. It doesn't go from 2000 to 1800 in a refinance. It goes from 2000 to zero. That makes a dramatic difference in cash flow, a dramatic difference, because all of a sudden I got $24,000 extra a year that I didn't have the year before. And that's what all the younger people need to take a look and make their decisions, just like my son did. Hey, I'm going to buy a house so I have some wealth in my house so I can turn it around into a reverse mortgage when I get older. Beautiful. Yeah, because I was just going to say, we need to let them know that the younger viewers, even though you're not 62, you got to pay attention to it and know that, hey, this could be for not only myself when I'm old enough, but for my family, friends, anybody around me who is at that age or close to that age to be thinking about it. Um, well, that's so important, Rebecca, because uh, all kinds of people that are my age, I tell them they should get a reverse point. No, I don't want to do that. It might hurt my kids. And if we talk to the kids, the kids will say, mom, dad, we just want you to have a good life. We're not waiting around for you to die so we get an inheritance. And if their kids are waiting around for you to die to get an inheritance, you should take them out of the inheritance because they're not good kids. So the fact is, is that most kids want their parents to be uh, healthy and happy and have money to use. And so really it's important for younger viewers to tell their parents, mom, dad, just make sure that you have a good life because they feel a certain amount of guilt of taking money from their IRA, taking money, especially from their house because they think their kids want it. And what do kids do when they inherit a house? Sell it. So just give them money. In fact, give them money while they're alive. I came down here on a vacation to Florida and I brought uh, my one of my sons and my uh, daughter-in-law and our two grandkids along because I'd rather give them money now than wait until after I'm dead because maybe I'm selfish. I'd like to go on vacation with them instead of leaving the money and then they go on vacation by themselves later. Yeah, that's, that would be, that is something that I would like to do with my family is, you know, you only have a set amount of time. You don't know when that time is going to be over. So make sure that you're spending as much time with them as you can. And if a reverse mortgage is going to help, then dad, if you're listening, you might want to consider that. Well, I had, I worked with a financial advisor many years ago in North Carolina. And he said, Harlan, I ask every one of my clients, how do you want to give your money away that you don't need with a warm hand or a cold hand? You tell me how that's pretty sobering. You know, is you're going to give it all away. You can't take it with you. So how are you going to give it away? Uh, and I choose to give a certain amount of it away every single year uh, to my kids, uh, primarily on vacations and experiences that we can do together. So we create memories because you can't put a price on that. Mm -hmm. no, you cannot. 
So Harlan, talk to us, how can like financial planners, real estate agents, and other professionals tell their clients about reverse mortgages? Yeah, so the deal is, is that 90% of people think reverse mortgages are kind of bad and, or a loan of last resort, a, you know, at least to avoid unless you absolutely need them. It's, it's not something that is part of their plan from the beginning. When somebody goes shopping for a house, um, and I'm down here in Florida where every second person has got gray hair, I fit in really well. Uh, and the fact is, is people come down here to buy houses. Most realtors don't even know that they can use money from their house in the north to buy a house down here and not have a payment on either one. Um, they, don't, they don't help them from the beginning to realize how their retirement can be better if they used a reverse mortgage to purchase a house when they're over 62 than if they're under 62. A, a little bit of a warning to realtors on this call. Um, uh, if you ignore us old people, your commissions will not be as good because we are a huge buying population. And you know, when I was looking at houses with my kids, I worked with three different realtors, not one realtor, when I was in helping them buy a house in Minneapolis and I was, had, drove in with Wisconsin plates on my car and I'm carrying my grand, beautiful little granddaughter in my arms, not one realtor said, Harlan, are you thinking about moving? I mean, what a perfect lead. I mean, obviously if I've got Wisconsin plates and I'm in love with this little granddaughter, and my kids are buying a house, maybe I'm gonna move up there. And no realtors that worked with my kids even asked that. They were so focused on the millennials that I was just some old guy in the corner and hopefully keep the kids quiet so they could show the house. Realtors, financial advisors, attorneys, any professionals need to understand how this plan works. I sought out a realtor in Minneapolis when I bought my retirement home or eventual retirement home, I'm not gonna retire anytime soon, but I bought a house in Minneapolis but I bought it from a realtor who understood reverse mortgages and dealing with seniors and not the other three realtors that had their first shot at me. So realtors need to understand this financial advisors. Oh my goodness. There is 50% of people that are going to be in trouble if they live to be 85. In fact, some of them, if they live to be 75, they need to understand how to employ the wealth that is in people's homes to mitigate the retirement cash flow problem. And uh, we do uh, two hour seminars with financial advisors. I'm teaching a class right now that is seven hours long for experienced financial advisors. Uh, this is something that they need to understand that it just needs to be part of the plan. And most of them just dismiss it and say, well, my people have money, so we won't worry about it until they're broke. And that is a very dangerous thing to do. And they need to understand it because at the top of the show, if we said 95% of people would be better off, why would professionals not want to tell their clients that? This seems to make sense. So we love to be able to help retire, uh, financial advisors uh, and realtors and attorneys, anybody that works, home care workers, anybody that works with the senior population, how this can enhance and make their lives better. Um, because our mission at Fairway Reverse is to change the way retirement is done in this country. We're not just interested in doing a couple, three loans. We want to change the way retirement's done in this country. And the only way we can do it is with the thanks of people like you to get the news out to people that don't know anything about it. Well, and that's why I'm so happy that you're on here to do that, because like I said, I was, I just got back into the mortgage game um, three years ago. And when you, I saw an email from you coming in about reverse mortgages. And I was like, what is this? I don't even know what this is. And for me to be in the business and not even know about it. And so I want the whole world to hear that reverse mortgages are a thing. And they can benefit you if you're planning correctly and you need to set yourself up with professionals that understand that that is reality. Well, that's the key. You know, there's so much misinformation out there and some people go on the internet to find things and they run across Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey says a bad idea to buy reverse mortgages or take a class in their church or whatever. And then they get misinformation and they just shut it down. And that is something uh, you guys don't have any idea how fortunate you are as young as you are. It took me until I was in my mid forties before I understood what reverse mortgages were. I used to tell people not to get them. I just heard they were bad. Didn't have any facts, just told them they were bad. I mean, how dumb is that? I mean, and, and I wake up until I was in my mid forties, fortunately for my family and uh, a thousand of my clients, 
I learned how to explain it and how to tell people about it. And now finally, I'm a year and a half away from getting my own. Um, but it's my family is better off. My parents were better off, my uncle, my sister. Um, and like I say, a thousand clients out there because I wasn't just digging in my heels thinking that I knew something that I didn't. You know, there's some really weird thing out there called the Dunning-Kruger effect that I ran into, a psychology thing that I ran into a few weeks ago that my daughter-in-law told me about. The Dunning-Kruger effect is where people think they know what they're doing, uh, what they, uh, they think they are an expert at something when they're not. And it's really scary. In fact, it's referred to as being a confident idiot. And so I warn everybody, including myself, if you think you really know something, ask some questions, ask people that are experts and find out if you really know what's going on. Because I read a book called Don't Believe Everything You Think. And there's a lot of people that just believe everything they think or hear, and they saw it on the internet, so it must be right. Or their, their brother-in-law told them, so it must be correct. Somebody at work who's a healthcare worker told them how to do a mortgage. Um, a mortgage person told them what kind of pills to take. I mean, really? Uh, ask some questions. And I, if there's anything I've got good at and anything that I can give advice, if I was on my deathbed and somebody said, what's the most important thing to tell people how to get around in this life? I'd say ask questions because you're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff that you don't know. And that especially applies to money and mortgages because there are so many misunderstandings out there. I love everything that you're bringing to the table today because there's so much education here. And I just want to clarify it. So if you're 62 years or older, you can use a reverse mortgage to purchase a new house, correct? You don't yeah. have to just refinance. Yes. I, I, in the beginning, a reverse mortgage was only used to refinance. It's only been the last 10, 12 years, I think it is, that reverse mortgage for purchase. We call it H for P. HECM for purchase, home equity conversion mortgage, H-E-C-M is the FHA name. They like, uh, you know, these kind of little abbreviations. Uh, but HECMs, uh, as we refer to them, HECM for purchase just came in a, a little bit over a decade ago. And so what that means is uh, if I've got a house in Wisconsin that I sell for 200 grand and I move to Minneapolis where houses are more expensive, uh, I can bring, you got to have about 50% down. So I bring my $200,000 down from Wisconsin. I can buy a house in Minnesota for 400,000 and I never have to worry about making a payment. So I just bought a house for half price. That's a heck of a senior discount. That's better than Denny's. So, because they only got like 10% or something. So the, the issue is, is well, well, in fact, your mom, uh, Rebecca in the mortgage business, actually helped a lady move to the lakes up north in northern Minnesota where her dream place always was, sold a house in Bloomington for 300000 bought a $550,000 house up in on the lake, and uh, put cash in her pocket. Didn't even use all the money. I mean, why would people not want to do that? And people say, well, yeah, but then you owe more money at the end. Uh, not necessarily because you never use the cash in the first place. Reverse mortgages decrease the amount of home equity you have, increases the amount of cash you have. So I have less equity in my left pocket, more cash in my right pocket. And so it's not that I lose something, I'm just transferring it to a different place. And that's what's really weird that people don't really get is that it's okay because I ask all your listeners, have you ever seen engraved on a tombstone or a plaque on somebody's casket? I died with $322,000 in home equity. I mean, I've never seen that. And I've been to a lot of funerals in my lifetime. But everybody lives like that's what you got to do is die with the most equity and I'm going to die with my house free and clear. It all comes from depression era thinking. And I wrote a book specifically about that. Um, uh, it's called The Cinderella of the Baby Boomer Retirement, uh, Reverse Mortgages and Home Equity. And uh, be happy to uh, uh, let your listeners know how you can just get it for free. You can buy it on Amazon. You can get it for free. They just send an email to reverse sales at fairwaymc.com. In fact, I'll bring up my title slide here and just say, Hey, I want to learn more about this. You know, this sounds kind of crazy, but I'm wondering if this is something that really makes sense. So that's my contact information and send it over to reverse sales. Or of course, talk to Rebecca and Chris and say, Hey, you guys look pretty darn young, but it looks like you might know something about helping the old people. And that's really the key is you want to talk to the professionals right here at Fairway. Well, I love the fact that you bring up that specific situation about, um, you know, I have, I sold my house. I have $200,000 that I have. It's right here in my hands and I can buy a house 
that is 400,000 and do a reverse mortgage instead of people thinking, okay, well, I could pay cash. I can just buy a $200,000 home. No, and that's, that's not true. That's another reason why realtors need to know about this. You do well by, by doing good. So if they help somebody buy a $400,000 house for no payment, there's more commission on a $400,000 house than a $200,000 house. But most importantly, they've helped a client become a raving fan. Uh, and that's a really huge issue because that realtor just told somebody something that nobody else did. So you're right. It's, it's almost like, wait, this is too good to be true. Uh, how does this work again? I, I mean, I never have to pay. No, not until a year after you're dead. Uh, that's a really good terms, you know, because all other mortgages, those forward mortgages that you guys do, you make people pay like in the first 60 days, right? And then they got to pay like every month. Uh, yeah, we do that. Yes. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just awful. We just tell people pay a year after you're dead. It, you know, it's, it's a really easy. Payment plan. <laughs> well, and aren't there different options though too? Like you can buy one and not have a payment, or you can um, get payments given to you every month. Isn't there a different, a few different ways you can go about it? It is, and that's important that you point that out. Thank you, because the issue is this: um, it's more like an investment than a mortgage. You put money in, you're pulling money out. So how do you pull it out? Well, you can pull it on a lump sum, like buying a house. Or you can uh, or, or refinance, obviously, your existing home, stop your mortgage. Uh, or you can have a monthly check, just like you put in a monthly check. You can take a monthly check out. You can do that with investments, too. Or you can kind of have it like a line of credit that you just pull money out when you need it. And if you don't need it, you just leave it sit. And it continues to grow if you don't use it. So we give you more of it, and it doesn't get canceled. A lot of people say, well, I'll just get a regular line of credit at the bank. Well, th then you got to pay it back. If you pull out 100000 you got to pay back one hundred fifty. So that's not really income and it can be canceled at any time. And so, you know, you mentioned about COVID. This has dramatically affected uh, seniors in retirement way more than any other uh, group. And uh, because of job losses, because of forbearance, a lot of people had to go into forbearance. Our people are permanently in forbearance. They can make a payment or they don't have to make a payment. So if somebody wants to make a payment and store money in their house, they can, and then we give it back to them from that perspective. So several ways to do it. And people say, well, what's the best way to do it? Totally depends on what your situation is. That's where we ask you questions to find out whether or not it fits. And I challenge your listeners, if there's anybody that's kind of a naysayer or kind of skeptical, they need to give you guys a call or send us an email at reverse sales and say, you know, I want you to prove this to me. I'm really skeptical. I want you to prove that this would make my retirement better or my parents' retirement better. If it doesn't make it better, we're not going to do anything. But if we can prove that, hey, this is going to improve your cash flow, it's going to improve your tax situation, it's going to prove the legacy to the kids, the grandkids, then why would you not do it? So Harlan, you bring such a wealth of knowledge to this, and you probably can tell us success stories all day long. But is there any success story that stands out that you want to share with our listeners? Well, there's been tons of people that we have literally saved their houses uh, when that's a widow that lost her husband, she was going to have to move, they didn't, couldn't maintain their lifestyle, whatever. But I don't really want to go into those because people are, those are the loans of last resort. The loans of first resort of fixing the problem before it happened is really the key. So I love the situation that we just did in Scottsdale, Arizona. These people were fine. They had four or $500,000 in, in re retirement accounts. Um, they were buying a house. They had plenty of money down. They're going to put $300,000 down on a $600,000 house. But when we looked into their situation, we said, do you know that if he dies, you're going to lose this house. You will not be able to afford to make the payments because his pension is gone. So you are fine now. I mean, they were living large. They were doing great. $6,000 a month in income, $400,000 in their savings account. But when we showed them what would happen if he passed away, and then we also showed them even if he doesn't pass away, in 12 years, you are going to run out of money at the pace that you are using money. So you're doing great now. But if you keep making a mortgage payment on $300,000, by the time you are in your mid-70s, you're out of money. They almost broke down and cried. They said, why didn't anybody tell us this? So we gave them a reverse mortgage with a zero payment. And they will never run out of money, even at their current spending. 
and they will be able to enjoy traveling with their kids and their grandkids, and they'll be able to enjoy living down in Arizona and flying back in the summer and so on and so forth. And that was just a great feeling to be able to take our glasses, put them on and let them see into the future because everybody looks a month ahead or two months ahead. We help them look 10, 15, 20 years into the future. What happens if somebody dies, somebody gets sick, or if you just continue your normal spending, how does your life end up? Uh, I, uh, the one, one thing that I'd really like to get clear to your, uh, to your listeners, and as I get older, I've been more concerned about this. Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of his rules, one of the habits is begin with the end in mind. If you want to be okay at your 80th, 90th birthday, you don't just make plans for the next month or the next year. You do things today that's going to take care of you when you're 90 or when you're 80 and you're on your deathbed. And as you make decisions, you know, personally, as well as we're, we help people make decisions from a money perspective. And, and Rebecca, your husband is uh, to be as a financial advisor. That is our job is to put that into the future as to, okay, how does this decision affect it? Can you afford a $1,400 mortgage payment today? Sure. Can you 10 years from now? 20? That's a whole different question. And that's what I want to impress upon your listeners. Look into the future because it's easy to make decisions for the next year. It's hard to make decisions for 30 years of retirement. The average retirement is 8,000 days. And most people look about 30 to 60 days into the future. That's a recipe for disaster. We can help make that completely take that worry away by showing them where they're going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Love it. Wealth of knowledge. I know we talked about a lot today, but any last thoughts that you would want to make sure our listeners are aware of? Well, I go back to don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you've heard on the radio or the internet or the people at church or the, the, the girl at work or whatever the situation is. Mm -hmm. Investigate this for yourself. Because I used to tell people, here I am an expert on reverse mortgages and I speak all over the country on it. And I have to admit that 18 years ago, I told people, whatever you do, don't get a reverse mortgage. It's a ripoff. It costs too much. And it will not only hurt you, but it rips off your kids. Stay away from them. And then I got invited to a reverse mortgage seminar in Miami in January. Now, what do you do if you live in Wisconsin and you get invited to a webinar or seminar, a live seminar on the South Beach in Miami? You go. You go to, yeah. You don't ask any questions. You just go and you're going to tough out the stupid seminar and spend time on the beach. That seminar changed my life. And I realized that I was wrong. If I wouldn't have went to that seminar, I can't imagine how I wouldn't have been able to help people as much. I wouldn't have had as good a life myself. My parents, my wife's parents, my sister would not have had what they have today because I would have been stubborn and stupid and thinking that I knew what was going on when I didn't. And so I just encourage anybody that says, yeah, I've heard those reverse mortgages. I just heard they're bad. Forget it. And maybe they already stopped listening. But for those of you that are still listening about reverse mortgages, take a look into how that fits into your overall retirement plan. Don't make a mistake by just discarding it, putting it on your shelf and saying, yeah, well, uh, what's the next topic? I was more interested in hearing about, you know, whatever. This is something that is a huge issue and there's $7.7 .7 trillion sitting in people's houses doing absolutely nothing. And we can change the way retirement is done in this country. Because I tell you what, the government's not going to do it for us. I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat. There's not too many people that have faith either way that the government's going to fix everything. So it's up to us to do it. And uh, give Rebecca or Chris a call and say, I want to know a little bit more about this crazy stuff. You're not obligated, but it's certainly worth finding it out. They don't charge by the hour. We are not. And I'm sure that if people are listening and they're thinking about a reverse mortgage, there's probably one question that I don't think we touched on yet that I think we want to get to is that, okay, I have a reverse mortgage, I'm getting payments, and now my time has come and I have passed away. What happens for my children if I owe more on the home than what it's worth? Because I would not want my kids to I know I don't have to worry about it. I'm not here anymore, but now my kids might have to worry about it. And now they're not going to get any money. Now there's, they're going to owe money on this house that I took too much out on. 
you know, I should have brought that up a lot earlier because that's one of the biggest single fears that parents have, most parents. I'm gonna tell you a crazy story uh, to remember this. I was in Northern Wisconsin. It was like out of the movie Deliverance. Uh, I was going down this back road and I got lost trying to get to this appointment of this guy that made an appointment to get a reverse mortgage. And I stopped at a neighbor's house and I said, where does Mr. You know, whoever live? And they said, oh, well, it's two miles this way and a mile back there. It's kind of back in the woods. Um, good luck. I hope everything turns out okay. Now that made me a little nervous, but I went to the house anyway, uh, just uh, the duty of making the appointment. I walked in, he cleared off a little spot in his table, just a crummy, uh, you know, not well-kept house, worth quite a bit. It was worth two, 300,000 on the lake. Um, uh, and uh, uh, he said, oh, let's get this reverse mortgage application done. I want to hurry up and get it. Uh, I don't want to get as much money out as possible. And I said, well, just a minute. Usually we kind of talk about what you need so I can, you know, do this properly. So I just want to reverse mortgage. And I said, what's the purpose of it? To rip off my kids and hurt my ex-wife if possible. I want to die with as many debts as possible and put them on my kid kids because I hate all of them. And I especially hate my ex-wife. Whoa. I mean, I, I was like, yeah, most people don't say that. Like nobody has ever said that to me. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry, sir, but this is a federally insured loan. So if you die and you owe $500,000 on your house and it's only worth 300, that money is forgiven and FHA pays the balance and your kids cannot be left with a debt. It's impossible to leave your children with a debt if you have a reverse mortgage. The only way you could do that is with a forward mortgage where there were payments required, where you were personally responsible and you made your estate personally responsible. So it's impossible to leave a debt behind for your children. He said, I had no idea. I thought I could use it for that. Get out. I was never so happy to not make a sale, never so happy <laughs> to drive down a driveway than that day. That guy was evil. I mean, he hated everybody. It was pretty obvious why his kids were estranged and his wife was uh, obviously he was divorced. So I, I use that example that even if you wanted to hurt your kids, you can't. You're federally protected. So there's only two things that can happen. You die with equity in your home. My home is worth 500 grand and I use 200. Balance is 200. Well then uh, the kid, you die and the kids sell the house um, or they refinance it. But anyhow, they only owe 200,000 on the estate uh, and the estate doesn't owe it. The kids are just taking care of it because they inherited the house and the kids get the other 300,000. If there are three kids, each of them get a hundred grand. But if it goes the other way and you die in a year like 2009, and the house is only worth 300 and you owe 500, well, then the FHA comes in and says, we'll pay the difference. The kids don't get anything because the value of the house went down, mm -hmm. but the parents got to, they won the game because they got 500 grand out of the house and they probably used that to help their kids and grandkids anyway. And so uh, it's impossible to lose. So you're guaranteed, think about it going into a, a casino and then on the sign of the door says, um, you can only win, you cannot lose. Uh, that would be a good, I don't gamble, but I would probably go to one of those because you can't lose. So <laughs> yeah, you're not guaranteed to win. You're not guaranteed that you're gonna, we, cause we don't know the value of your house next year, say nothing about 20 years from now. So you're not guaranteed to win, but with or without a reverse mortgage, but you're guaranteed with a reverse mortgage not to lose. It doesn't get any better than that because FHA mortgage insurance protects the kids, the, the parents, the estate, nobody is at risk if it's upside down. And if it's right side up, if you win, then it, the money goes to the kids. So either way, you're ahead of the game. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that is something that, oh, I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna saddle my kids with a debt. And it's impossible to do so, even if you wanted to like that mean guy up in Northern Wisconsin at the end of the dead end road. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Harlan, for being on. There's a lot of great information you gave us. And every time that I hear you speak, I pick up another thing that it's like, oh, yes, this is another reason why we need to talk about reverse mortgages and why it can be a good thing. So um, again, if you want to reach Harlan, you can uh, reach him at the reverse sales at, at fairwaymc.com. Contact myself or Chris. We'd be happy to talk with you on that again. Um, so yeah, there's the email right there, reverse sales at fairwaymc.com. Again, contact myself or Chris, we'd be happy to walk through any questions that you have on it. And before we leave, of course, we have the um, compliance that I have to go through. So 
Your Home Show is sponsored by CG Home Loan Partners, a Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, and MLS number 2289. We're licensed in Minnesota, Wisconsin, California. Chris Weniger and MLS number 225608, Rebecca Guerrero and MLS number 1728384, and Carrie Guerrero and MLS number 209015. Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation is an equal housing opportunity. This is not an offer to enter into an agreement. Not all customers will qualify. Information rates and programs are subject to change without notice. And all products are subject to credit and property approval. So if you have not done so, please find us on Facebook at Your Home Show. We would love for you to follow us, comment, like, ask us any questions. And if there's anything else that you want to know more about, let us know so we can put a show on for you guys. We will see you next weekend. I hope you all have a great day.